السلام علیکم و رحمۃ اللہ وبرکاتہ محمد بلال فرام سعودی عربیہ آئی ریکویسٹ یو ٹو کائنڈلی گف اے بریف ڈسکرپشن آن دا لائف ہسٹری آف شیخ ضیاء الرحمٰن آزمی ایلیاس بنکے لال رحیم اللہ اے ریورٹ فرام اتر پردیش اسٹیٹ آف انڈیا ہو ریسنٹلی پاسٹ اوے ان مدینہ المنورہ ان شاء اللہ دس اسٹوری مائٹ پرووائڈ انسپریشن to many of our muslim brothers and god willing might also serve as an eye opener to many hindu brothers jazakallahu khairan last month the muslim ummah lost an important personality sheikh professor dr muhammad ziaur rahman azmi on the 30th of july 2020 on the yawm al arafa on the 9th dhil hajjah during the zohar azan sheikh ziyar rahman azmi was very close to me and he was one of the first few teachers of mine as far as teachers in the islamic deen is concerned and i pray to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he grant him jannat al firdaus al ala in the company of prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam sheikh ziyar man azmi he was the dean of the faculty of hadith in the islamic university of madina and he was also a lecturer in the prophet's mosque that masjid e nabawi in madina who would have imagined that the person who was the dean of the faculty in the famous islamic university of madina and also a lecturer at the prophet mosque masjid e nabawi was born in a hindu family in 1943 about 76 years ago in the village of bilyar ganj bilaria ganj in azamgarh in the state of up in india imagine a person who was born in uttar pradesh one of the most communally charged state in india where the muslim minority they are harassed and persecuted from there where he was born allah transformed him and a person who spent most of his life in the most peaceful city in the world that is madina munawwara and alhamdulillah he died on one of the best days of the year that is yawm al arafa during the azan of doha time alhamdulillah what a journey sheikh zairman asked me his name was bakelal name was bankelal and he was born in a hindu family and at the age of 16 he was inspired by the teachings of islam mainly he was inspired by the oneness of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by the message of tawhid in the religion of islam and at the age of 16 he reverted to islam after he accepted islam his life was in danger in the state of up he was forced to migrate to do hijra to the state of tamil nadu and and in tamil nadu he studied arabic and islamic studies in jamia darus salam in umrabad in tamil nadu and after he completed his course of arabic and islamic studies after 6 years he was accepted as a student for the bachelor's degree in the famous Islamic University of Medina alhamdulillah he was the first muslim who was a hindu revert who was accepted as a student in the Islamic University of Medina and after he finished his bachelor's degree in the Islamic University of Medina he went to mecca and he enrolled himself in the king abdul aziz university in mecca and he finished his master's degree and later on this university 
is now called as the Ummul Qura University, Makkah. And from Makkah later on, he went to Cairo, Egypt. And he did his PhD in the Al Hazar University, in Al Azhar University, in Cairo, in Egypt. And after he finished his PhD, he came back to Saudi Arabia. And Alhamdulillah, he was appointed as a professor in the faculty of Hadith in the Islamic University of Medina. And later on, he took various posts of administration, of teaching in various institutes, including the Muslim World League, the Rabta Alam al Islamia in Makkah. Later on, he was again appointed as the dean of the faculty of Hadith in the Islamic University of Medina, where he retired. And simultaneously, he was also a khatib, a lecturer in the Prophet's mosque in Masjid al Nabi in Medina. Imagine what a journey from one of the worst states of India to one of the most peaceful city in the world. And Alhamdulillah, Sheikh Muhammad Zia Rahman asked me, he has authored dozens of books in Arabic. He also authored a book in Hindi, the Encyclopedia of the Quran. And he also wrote his autobiography in Urdu titled From Ganga to Zamzam. But his main, his main and the most famous work, I'll come to it inshallah later on. The first time I met Sheikh Zaram and Azmi was in 1997 when I went to Medina to study Arabic as a language. Before that, one year before that, in 1996, I went to Makkah and I studied for one month under Professor Dr. Nadwi who was a teacher of Arabic language, a professor of Arabic language in the Umrah University. Since I had Umrah visa, I could not stay for more than 30 days. Then later on, I tried to find out that who is the best Arabic teacher in the world who can teach to non-Arabs. And I got the reply. It was Dr. Fahab Rahim, And he was the head of the Loga department, the Arabic language department in the Islamic University of Medina. And, and people told me he's a very busy person and he mainly takes students of the PhD. So I doubt whether you'll be able to meet him or whether he'll give you time. But I said, what's the harm in trying? So I went to Medina and I met Dr. Fahab Darheem. And I told him that I'm a Dai in this field of Islam. And I would like to learn Arabic. So he told me, do you know that we gave a talk a few weeks before in Medina, I said, yes. I was sitting on the first row for your talk. And then I happened to know that, mashallah, he attended my lecture and he was very much willing to give me time. So much so that he told me that if you spend about six months with me, inshallah, you will know Arabic as a language. And he promised to give me more than five hours every day. After Zohar till just before Maghrib, every day. Alhamdulillah. And that's the time I took out my Akama, my resident permit of Saudi Arabia, so that I could spend six months in Medina. That's in the year 1997. But unfortunately, I hardly spent one month, maybe a few days less than a month, where I spent five hours every day with Dr. Fahab Darahim. And when I went to his house, I realized that he was a close friend of Professor Dr. Zeraman Asmi. And not only a close friend, he was also a tenant. In the villa that he lived, he lived on the ground floor, and on the first floor was the owner of the villa, that is Professor Dr. Zeraman Asmi. And that's the time I met him, and I also became very close to Professor Dr. Zeraman Asmi. And when I requested him that can he give me time, so he agreed to give me two weeks. He agreed to give me twice a week, few hours every session, twice a week. And with him also, mashallah, I studied for about a month. And my basics of my hadith, I acquired my knowledge from Dr. Prophet Zia Rehman Asmi. And in the passage of time, I became very close to him. And when 
I was standing under him. I asked him the question that whenever I say in my lecture that Muslims should follow Quran and say Hadith, Quran and say Hadith, do we have all the say Hadith compiled together? And the answer but naturally was no. Yes, there are many books of Sai Hadith, we have Sai Bukhari, Sai Muslim, then we have the Qutb Sitta, etc. But we don't have all the Sai Hadith compiled together. The best work that was done at that time was by Sheikh Nasr al Albani. Besides the two Sahiyain, Bukhari and Muslim, the remaining four books <coughs> of the Qutb Sitta, that is Sunan Abu Daud, Sunan Nisai, Tirmidhi, and Ibn Majah, Sheikh Nasr al-Albani, he bifurcated into Sahih and Zaif. So you have the Silsala Sahih, which has compilation of all the Sahih Hadith in the balance four books of the Qutb al-Sitta. But to say that all the Sahih Hadith was compiled, many of the people tried in the past, but no one completed the project. So while discussing with Sheikh Prophet Ziyaram and asked me, this was the time that maybe the seed was sown and after he retired alhamdulillah he spent about 15 to 18 years in this project and he compiled all the say hadith together and according to prophet Ziyaram and azmin he told me that there are about more than a million hadith that is there if you remove all the duplicates many hadiths are duplicate the matter is the same the chain of narrators are different or maybe the matan, the matter differs very slightly. So if you remove the duplicate hadith, different chains, but the matter being the same, he told me there are approximately 60,000 hadith. From the 60,000 hadith, he told me at that time, approximately 16,000 will be sahih. And after he retired, alhamdulillah, he took this voluminous project to compile all the sahih hadith, of all the books, not only the Qutb Sitta, but all the other books of Hadith and get them together and remove the duplicates so that anyone who reads this book can say that he has read all the Sai Hadith. And he told me that to the best ability, he finished this project, maybe I think about four years back. And that was the first edition that was printed. In the manuscript form it was in 20 volumes and this work was given to Darus Salaam for printing and they printed this book which Sheikh Zia Rahman called it as Jami Kamil. The full name is Al Jami Al Kamil Al Hadith Al Sahi Al Shamil. This is a complete name. Short form is Jami Kamil we say. But the full name is Al Jamil Al Jami Al Kamil Al Hadith Al Sahih Al Shami. This is the complete name. And it was printed in 12 volumes by Darus Salaam, the Arabic. And it contained about 16,500 hadith. All the duplicates were removed and it gave the chain of narrators. It also gave the hujja why this hadith is Sahih or why this hadith is Zaif and didn't include it into the main list and he had his own criteria every scholar besides the basic criteria that is there of the Sahih Hadith they have their own way of analyzing and they may agree with most of the scholars they may differ sometimes so he gave his reasoning why he deferred when some scholars say it is Sahih and according to him it wasn't Sahih it was Zaif he gave his reasoning or some scholars said Zaif and he said it is Hassan so the Takhrij is also there so all this put together, the chain of narrators with the takhrij, it was approximately 16 and a half thousand hadith. And he added another 3000 hadith to it. Those hadith which were very commonly known. It may be zaif, it may be modu. So people should not say that he skipped it. And even those hadith which were said to be sahih by famous muhaddisin, but he considered it as zaif. He even mentioned that and that was another 3000 hadith so that no one could say that he missed and I could say that Alhamdulillah if not 100% we can safely say that more than 95% of all the Sai hadith that is available 
has been compiled in this al jami Kamil. Alhamdulillah, it was a voluminous work. And later on, in the next two or three years, he spent in revising that. And recently, mashallah, just a few months back, the second revised edition has been printed of this al jami al Kamil in Pakistan. But this time, the lettering is a little bit bigger, so it is 19 volumes. And Alhamdulillah, I requested him that why doesn't he make a condensed version, a muqtasar al jami Kamil, so that it can be translated. Because the main book is good for scholars and for researchers, but for normal laymen, they are not so much bothered about the takhrij, they are more bothered about the hadith. So he agreed and he also made a muqtasar jami Kamil in five volumes, which doesn't have the takhrij, which only has the sanat of the hadith, and hadith number. He may say this hadith is also there in Sahih Bukhari, hadith number so and so, also there in Sahih Muslim, hadith number so and so, also in Abu Dawud, hadith number so and so. So at the end of the hadith, he even gave the references where it's present. And the same hadith may be present in three books or in four books or in five books, many a time more than that. So that no one can say that these hadith, these hadith have been missed. So in the Muqtasar, the Takhrij is missing. But the complete sanad is there. And alhamdulillah, even this muqtarsir is complete. And it's under the process of translation. And I took the onus of translating it, having it translated it into English. And this project, we started about four and a half years back after the first edition was completed, along with the muqtasir. And we gave it to to a, someone who was expert in Arabic and English. And the project was for three years. But unfortunately, when the translation was complete, I had it checked with some other expert and, and I wasn't happy with the English translation. So we are re-revising it. And so far we have reached, we have completed the first volume and part of the second volume. I think it will take another one or two years because I believe that the translation should be good. Unfortunately, the English translation of most of the books of Hadith is not up to the standard. Most of them are poor, some are fair, some may be good, but not of excellent quality. So inshallah we expect to complete the translation of the Muqtasar Jami Kamil, inshallah in the next two years, and we'll have it printed into English. <coughs> I also requested, Prof. Ziyaraman asked me, to have the full Jame Kamil only in one volume without the Sanad, which he disagreed. He said, we as Muhaddisin, we don't believe a Hadith can be without Sanad. I said, let's be practical if you want to give it to the layman or maybe a student of knowledge to make it more compact so that only write the name of the Saba who narrated it without the Sanad. So finally, after many years, he agreed and he had just started with the project of making it into one volume so that it is more condensed and easier for the layman or the common Muslim to read. Unfortunately, he could not complete that one volume. I'm in touch with some of my common friends and with the children of Prophet Ziyaram and Azmi. And inshallah, we'll try and make this Jame Kamil into one volume so that we only have the main hadith with the name of the Sahaba so that the hadith becomes much shorter and easier for a common man to read. And if we read this, we can at least say that we have read the Quran and we have read almost all the Sahih Hadith. So if it's in five volume now, Muqtar Sajjame Kamil, it may be in one volume later on, it's possible for most of the Muslims to read if they want to read. But reading all the books of Hadith is extremely difficult or next to impossible for a common man. Inshallah, we pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that made this one volume of Jame Kamil also come into existence very soon. But at present, we have the Muqtasir Jame Al Kamil. And Alhamdulillah, by Allah's grace, Prophet Ziyar Rahman asked me, he gave an authority to me. He gave a letter to me saying that I have the right to translate his complete Al Jame, Al Kamil, Al Hadith, Al Sahih, Al Shamil into any language what I want. And 
he gave me permission even for the Muktasar Jami Kamil to be translated. And Alhamdulillah, he gave me 20 blank letters that I can give permission to any publisher to publish his origin, his original Arabic version of the Jami Al Kamil. But natural, I don't intend selling this to anyone, but natural for the benefit of the Ummah to spread the message of the great one work done by Dr. Zeram and Azmi. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that this work that he did, it is really voluminous. Many people in the last 1400 tried, but they could not complete it. Allah blessed him, alhamdulillah, that after he retired, he spent, along with the revision, spent approximately 20 years compiling the hadith, doing his takhrij. He had a couple of two, three of the PhDs who helped him in this project, but he did it single-handedly, alhamdulillah. He didn't want any other scholar or any other person to interfere. There were some students of PhD or some who passed PhD did help him in copying, that's it. But he himself wanted to do it individually. And alhamdulillah blessed him and he completed the project. Though this book is not that famous, I'm waiting for the English translation to be completed. And inshallah, then we will market it better so that the whole Muslim Ummah can benefit from one of the greatest work done by late Sheikh Professor Dr. Muhammad Zia Rahman Azmi, Rahimullah. May Allah have mercy on him. And I pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that may he grant Jalitar Firdos al-Ala to Sheikh Muhammad Zia Rahman Azmi.